Hi, everybody. It's me, Jessica, your health fitness program manager from McLean. And I'm about to lead you through a relaxing, restorative yin yoga practice that's going to help us to let go of any feelings of sadness. So we've got a lot more heart openers coming your way, a lot more big stretches into the low back. Uh, expansion of the lungs. I recommend having a block, maybe two. And if you're really feeling overwhelmed lately, as we get started in our seating position, maybe you start close to a wall. All right. Go ahead, grab any props that you need, and then we shall begin in a comfortable seated position of your choice. I'm going to recommend that you consider sitting on your block. Okay. Timers are going. It's right here. Great. So, uh, especially if you find that you came into a cross-legged seated position and your knees were higher than your hips, sitting on a block can help you to create a little extra space, opening the hips and getting those knees down a little bit lower. And starting off by having a wall behind you, whether you're leaning against it or you just know that there is a wall right behind you can be already a way that you might feel a little bit more relaxed uh, in whatever room that you're in. Great. We're going to take two more minutes here in our breath, in your comfortable seated position of choice. And start to tune into how you're breathing today. A lot of times when we're feeling stressed or we're feeling sad, breath can be quite shallow, uh, right up at the top of your chest. So take this time right now and over the next uh, 40, 30 amazing minutes together. To work to send a little bit more breath all the way down into your belly, into your diaphragm. With every inhale today, focus on noticing how your body feels. And with every exhale, work to just let go of all of the stored thoughts, feelings that we don't need anymore. It's going to be really normal throughout practice. For your thoughts to stray away from this stretch from your breath right now. And perhaps consider that all of the emotions that you don't need, some of these thoughts that don't quite serve us, they're just bubbling up so that we can exhale them out and let it go. Just a couple more breaths right here. I apologize in advance because the bird has started being really bad. Fred, you may also focus on your breath. Okay, let's make our way in to tabletop where we're going to do a couple of wrist stretches. So move your block out of your way. Awesome. And let's go ahead and turn our hands palms over so the back of the hands are on the floor and fingers are pointing towards your knees. Use your exhale to take this big stretch on the back of the wrist and use your inhale to lift yourself up. You're applying as much pressure as feels okay for you. 
getting a little stretch to the opposite side uh, of your hand. Maybe feeling a little bit more of a stretch also just under your wrist. So today we're really working uh, to create some stretches and sens sensations. Turn your hands, palms over. Find your neutral tabletop. Uh, such that you would if you were doing acupuncture to help relieve any feelings of stress or sadness. That's truly our focus. All right, leading with your hips. Give yourself a couple cat cows. Move at the pace of your breath. Find any extra little chimneys or shakes that call to you. One more minute in your personal cat cow, just finding what feels right. I'm gonna bring some more stretches to the wrist while we're here, bringing shoulders forward of the fingertips. Just getting that under the wrist stretch. So whether we realize it or not, our body does really tend to hold on to a lot of thoughts, feelings, and emotions. And taking these big stretches is a good way to let go of some of them. Maybe you notice something that feels really great, which is awesome. It's also really normal uh, throughout a yoga class that maybe you find that you're temporarily overwhelmed or surprised uh, when what an emotion or thoughts pop up. So just encouraging you that this is just a practice. Enjoy whatever it is that your body, mind, soul find themselves uh, working through today. Go ahead, open your knees nice and wide. Start to sink your glutes back towards your heels. Walk your hands forward. Next up, we've got a nice long wide leg child's pose. If you want, you can always place a block underneath of your head if it feels uncomfortable to release your head all the way down towards the floor. And you can stretch your arms forward. But can you create some relaxation in your shoulders right here? Tune back into your breath. Next, we're actually going to take three big breaths together. So starting with your mouth closed. Take a long, slow, deep inhale in through your nose, as slow, as deep, as full as possible. Maybe your tongue is pressing up onto the roof of your mouth, starting to practice some ujjayi breathing. And as you're ready, open your mouth. <sighs> Intentional, loud exhale. Begin an inhale again, mouth closed. Pause at the top, lungs full, open mouth. One more big breath together. Let's try this last inhale, exhale, just through the nose. So sealing lips, little space between your teeth as you're enjoying your slow deep inhale. And then with mouth closed, still enjoying a long, slow, quiet exhale. If breathing out through the nose didn't feel right for you today, feel free to continue your energetic breath through your mouth, but I do encourage at least taking an inhale through the nose and exhaling out wherever feels right for you.
Next up is melting heart pulls, getting that big stretch uh, into the upper back, still opening the chest and shoulders. So shifting hips up, shifting chest forward, arms can stretch forward. I'm going to keep that block that I had down that was moments ago under my head and replace it with my chest. We're going to be in this puppy pose also for about three minutes. If at any point puppy pose becomes too overwhelming for you, simply walk your hands back and return into child's pose, and we're all going to meet there together. You can always make puppy pose more intense by stretching your chin forward. Check in for a moment. Uh, anything can happen with your legs. This is Yin. We're here for, to create some relaxation. But notice if you're rolling uh, your heels in. Perhaps today you work to stack your heels on top of your feet, applying a little bit of extra pressure, uh, shins, knees into the floor, a little extra separation of the glutes instead of maybe shying away from a challenging stretch for you. Last couple of breaths right here in this puppy pose in this deep upper back shoulder opener. What can you engage a little bit more? How can you relax and create some more space? Keep separating through the glutes. A gentle little squeeze of shoulder blades. Lots of length for the neck. Last two breaths right here. After your second exhale, start to walk your hands back, sink your glutes towards your heels once again. We'll take one more minute in our child's pose. Perhaps this time you relax your head to the floor if you didn't last time. Still trying to create some relaxation and softness through the shoulders. But arms can be extended as far forward as you want or perhaps coming into tadpole the second time around. If hands are close to heels, start to drag your fingers forward. We're going to slink our whole body forward and come into Sphinx. How low can you stay to the mat as you bring yourself forward? Awesome. Uh, if you need to, you can open your legs a little bit wider. Take a moment to actively start to press the tops of the feet into the floor. Elbows are underneath of your shoulders. Lifting your chest up. Try to really lift your heart up and gaze forward. You might even want to take your block 
I like to take my block and uh, just press it right against like the middle of the ribs. Still staying active through the glutes. The more active you are through the glutes, uh, through your posterior chain, the easier it's going to be to have your chest lifted. And the more passive you are, the more you're going to just think a little bit more forward. You're going to be here in this sphinx pose for just about two more minutes. Just like that melting hearts pulse, if the sphinx is feeling too intense, open your arms a little bit wider, a little bit less of a lift and stretch into your low back. Uh, if you're using this block to help you get the stretch in your low back, carefully remove it and then release your chest down towards the mat. Make a nice little pillow with your hands and relax your head down on the floor for some alligator. If you want, you can bend your knees and windshield wipe your feet right and left. Otherwise, you can just relax right here. Just breathe into your low back, relieving any tension. Think about squeezing your shoulder blades a little towards each other and then seating them down your back, stretching uh, the shoulders towards your hips. Next up, we're going to do bow tie. Awesome. So take a little lift of your chest. Bring a block back in because you might want to put the top of your head on the block. Awesome. Cross your arms and both palms face up towards the ceiling. And then gently walk, wiggle your hands in opposite direction. And then see if you can rest your head on the block. I had to lift my block up. And you can apply as much pressure onto your arms as possible here, or as feels acceptable. I'm keeping my arms a little on top of my chest, so there's not too much pressure. We've got about one minute left on this side. Really breathe into the backside body here. Okay. 
All right, take your time. We're gonna come out of this side. So maybe you roll gently to one side and then the other as we switch which arm we have on top. So go ahead, cross close to the elbows again. Or your belly, your chest back down towards the floor. Relax into this big stretch. Think about like your pecs are giving your heart a hug. You're opening up the back side of the body. Deep breaths to expand the lung as you open the back side. One more full, deep inhale, exhale. And then again, consider gently rolling side to side to help get your arms out from underneath of you. And then arms are going to relax by your side. Palms facing up towards the ceiling. Go ahead, turn your head. Look over your right shoulder. Try to open your shoulders. Can the tips of them touch onto the mat? Really sink into it. Find one spot to relax your eyes close by the edge of your mat. Maybe a speck of dust. On your next inhale, carefully lift your head up and look in the opposite direction, placing your temple, maybe your ear on your mat, opening your back, opening your shoulders, relax. Great. Let's roll over. Take your time rolling over. And as you get there, we're going to come into knees to chest pose. So you can start just bending your knees, uh, really releasing your spine down on the floor. And then as you're ready, draw both knees up towards your chest. You can keep them wide. You can squeeze them together for a little bit more stimulation of your lower belly. Keep your feet relaxed side by side. 
and actually relax your feet. Notice if grabbing hold of your knees made you round your upper back and take your shoulders up off of the mat. And can you release your shoulders back down? Gentle tucking of your chin towards your chest to get as much of the back of your head, back of your neck, spine all the way down to your tailbone, flat on the floor. And if you feel like most of your spine is really lush with the mat, maybe you take a gentle little rocking side by side here. The last couple breaths with knees to chest. I like to even open one knee a little bit more to the side and then bring it back in. To take a nice controlled stretch through the hip. All right, go ahead, bring your legs back together, release the soles of the feet down to the floor. You can do it one at a time. And then we're going to take a block and use it for a supported glute bridge. So go ahead, press into the soles of your feet, lift your hips up, and place your low back. Oh, on whichever part of the block feels best for you. And now we're starting to get a nice stretch in the belly. Take a couple breaths right here uh, with our heels still close to the center line. Think about your chest kind of coming uh, closer towards your throat as we're here in the supported glute bridge. Still plenty of space for you to enjoy some long, slow, deep breaths though. If you want more of this stretch, of this opening of the belly, you can start to walk or wiggle your heels further from the center line of your body. Find a place that feels good. Maybe you can straighten your legs all the way out. Remember, if you come into a stretch uh, and it starts to feel painful or you find that it limits your breath, that's a little too far. So you can always ease back. If this feels good and you're ready for even more, you can inhale your arms up overhead. Emphasizing just that opening that you're getting in your belly. And a gentle little choking of the throat sensation. If you brought your arms up overhead, bring your arms back down by your side, palms face down, even gently press them into the floor as you push into your heels. 
and start to walk or wiggle your feet back to center. Still staying here in this supported glute bridge though. With your chest nice and open, your shoulders pressed into the mat, your hands pumped, press down into the mat as well. We're gonna go ahead, next step, keep your left foot planted, inhale your right leg up towards the ceiling. Can you even flex your toe back towards your face? Relax through your chest and shoulders. Just letting gravity do the work here for a moment. Keep working to stretch through your heel and find some flexion in your foot. And on your next exhale, go ahead, release your right foot back down to the floor. Once it's firmly planted, inhale your left leg up towards the ceiling, creating as much length as you can. If there's still a generous bend in your knees, that's okay. If you're uh, feeling unsteady, press a little bit more through the back of your shoulders, through your hands, palms into the mat. If you're feeling really good and stable in your core, you can always uh, change your hand position to a place that feels a little bit more uh, organic or natural to you. Couple breaths left right here. One more big inhale, flexing toes back towards your face. And on your exhale, releasing your left foot down towards the floor. Next up, we're gonna draw both knees in towards your chest. No need to apply any extra pressure. You got a lot of pressure of the low back uh, into your block. And then we're gonna work to send both legs up towards the ceiling. Can you flex your toes back towards your face? Got a little more than a minute to go right here, opening your chest, pressing the backs of the shoulders into the floor, finding a little bit of that stability by really pushing your hands palms into the mat as well. Last couple breaths here, stretch, stretch, stretch through your heels. Normal if you feel some shaking or trembling through your legs. One more big inhale. And on your exhale, take your time. Bend your knees back in towards your chest. And then maybe one at a time, releasing your feet back down towards the floor. Once both feet are firmly planted, go ahead, press into them. Lift your hips up. Let's just stay lifted in a bridge for a moment. Think about squeezing your inner thighs in towards each other, really squeezing your glutes, keeping your hands palms pressed down towards the floor for two more breaths.
And on your next exhale, release yourself down one vertebrae at a time. From here, extend your arms out to the side in a T and then carefully with intention, roll over to one side, taking a gentle spine twist. Can you keep both of your shoulders on the floor? Can you look in the opposite direction and your knees are pointed? And then another opportunity to enhance the twist, to really think about stacking. Uh, if your knees went to the right, your left hip on top of the right without sacrificing shoulders coming up off of the floor. Take your time carefully, untwist. Take a full cycle of breath when you roll onto your back again as you reground yourself. And then as you're ready, rolling to the opposite side, finding your spine twist once again. You can always use your block if you need to to keep both shoulders on the mat and then option to look in the opposite direction of your knees for a deeper spine twist. Can you restack this time your right hip on top of your left? One minute left. As you're ready, roll onto your back one more time. Take your two grounding breaths. You can bring your arms closer towards the center line. And then bring your feet together and allow your heels to fall out towards the side. Even if your hips are really open, if you have your two blocks, let's go ahead and use them to just find a little bit of lift of the floor up towards your hips. Maybe even tilting your blocks 
and to be extra supportive as we take our last three minutes in a non-savasana posture. One minute left. As you're ready, go ahead, extend through your legs. Coming into a more traditional savasana, maybe heels touch and feet fall open. Maybe you choose to open your arms a little wider, open your legs a little wider. If you're having any discomfort in your back, perhaps you bend your knees and then tent them in together. Just a couple minutes left together. Make any readjustments that you need so that every exhale, you can relax and release into your mat space a little bit more. I encourage you to take these last Two minutes in our savasana together with your eyes closed. Just reflecting on your practice and rejoicing in your breath.
You're welcome to stay in this savasana as long as it continues to honor you. If you're ready to close class out and you want to do so together, keep your eyes closed. Take a little wiggle of your fingers and toes. Take your time, make your way back into a comfortable seated position of your choice. And when you get there, start to ground through your sit bones. Then while grounding on your next inhale, bring your arms up overhead. Bring your hands, palms together. And then bring your hands down to heart center with your thumbs touching your chest sternum. Tuck your chin to your chest. Take a moment as you bow your head and honor yourself. I hope that you're feeling energetically lighter, more open, able to take a deeper breath, proud of yourself for coming to your mat space today. So we are together again. As always, I encourage you to think good thoughts, speak good words, eat good foods, do good deeds, and take the time to nourish yourself from the inside out because you are worth making the time for and investing in your personal health. If it feels right, you can bring your thumb up to your third eye, your drishti on your forehead as you lift your heart and know that the light within me honors, sees, and is so thankful for the light within you. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Namaste.